Hello and welcome to a new video about measurement. This time we are going to talk about position measurement. I'm going to talk about a specific type of position measurement and then go to some more common understanding. All right. So this specific type of position measurement we are talking about is optical position measurement. Okay, optical Generally, optical position measurement is working with rulers. It's like I would take a ruler and measure where I am. Well, it's not that easy. However, I will draw now one possibility. So there is a ruler. And this ruler is divided into segments. These segments are usually very tiny, can go down to a thousand parts of a millimeter, so to a, to a micrometer actually. Yeah. And each segment consists of a number of bits huh? and each segment has a code huh? so there might be it might look like that These black parts uh, I'm drawing here, these are not, you cannot watch them, all right? So there is a code, I will not draw all of them. There's a certain code and each code each combination yeah, is presenting a position, right? And now I only need here somewhere some, I'll draw it maybe in a different color. Yeah. So this is a ruler and here we have some, some light beams. And on one side, we have detectors. For each, for each line, I have one detector. Yeah. Detectors. On the on the other side. We have let's draw them emitters. Those emitters are emitting light, and if it's a look through. Uh, if it's a look through, then uh, this detector will detect. If it's not a look through, if it's somehow shaded, uh, this particular square of the ruler, then these uh, detectors will not detect anything. And because then I have a pattern, uh, this, these, these are always on, I have a pattern on the, of the detectors and I can really determine at which position. Yeah? So here we have position 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on. Yeah? And so we can really determine which at which position we are. Yeah? 
this code I've just drawn here. Yeah. This is some special code. Uh, this is called gray code. Yeah. So we have we have a code for every position at the ruler. This is the ruler. Usually made of glass. And it's it's etched, okay. Maybe you know it's reflective material. Then you have detectors and emitters at the same side, and those squares are non-reflective, or it's a look-through or something like this. Yeah. And if the ruler is moving, we can measure the position. Yeah. Position of ruler is is determined by the read code. And the usual coding of this is so-called gray code. What is a gray code? A gray code is a code where only one bit is changing from one position to the next position. Only one bit is changing. If you would, if we would have binary code and we're making an error of exactly one bit, it might, we might be off far. Yeah. If we have a gray code and we make an error of exactly one bit, yeah, we are at an, at a, at a neighbor position and not, and not far away. All right. Yeah, this is this is how they was those those codes they built them looking like a little bit like a tree they built something like that. Uh, gray code. This is not one. There's not one gray code. There are several gray codes. The only the only uh, thing it has to to fulfill. Uh, the only the only parameter has to fulfill that only one bit. Yeah, gray code. Only one bit is changing. This is the rule. Only one bit is from one position to the next, of course. So this is one possibility of optical position measurement. If we turn this on, think about we are turned off. Yeah, we are somewhere. If we turn it on, we read out the, the position and we exactly know where we are. By the way, it doesn't really matter if the detectors and emitters are moving or the ruler is moving. Something has to move, right? So it's just a relative movement. Yeah? So, however, we are measuring the position right after turning on. Yeah? We know exactly where we are. We know exactly where we are. Yeah? Just from looking at the code. Yeah? So this thing is called absolute position measurement. Yeah? So this is an absolute position measurement. What does it mean absolute? Absolute We know exactly where we are at any point in time. The absolute position is known. That's absolute position measurement. All right. This, you see, there are a lot of emitters, there are a lot of detectors. Maybe emitters can only be one, yeah, because, yeah, but you need a lot of detectors, yeah, because it really doesn't, they are on anyway, yeah. Uh, another possibility of optical position measurement is this, yeah, then I have an 
also ruler, also ruler. And this ruler has now only holes, stripes, slots. Here they are. Slots. Look through windows, windows in a ruler. Ruler. And then we have one emitter at this side. We have one detector at this side. And here we have the light. And the light is either blocked or not, depending if the ruler has this slot, this look through, or is blocking the light. And now imagine what is happening if the ruler is moving. Yeah? We will get here dark, bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark. We get here pulses. And if I know, if I count the pulses, if I count the pulses here, and know how much movement one pulse means, I know exactly how far I have been traveled. So the ruler is moving. We get here pulses, we count the pulses. I know exactly how far we have gone, yeah? at least to the accuracy of this. Yeah, to the but like I said, it's around. Write it down: accuracy. One micrometer. Huh? So it's accurate. Huh? I know pretty exactly where I am. Huh? Where, no, I don't know where I am. I know how far I have been traveling. This is the big difference. All right. Here I know exactly where I am. Here I only know how far I've, I've gone. And it's much easier. Yeah? Here I always have the trouble that this detector is only detecting this. This detector is only detecting this. This is not that easy to, to solve. And so these things are more expensive than these things. Yeah? And also, you know, it's not that easy to etch or produce those rulers. They are also more expensive. And these can even be more accurate. Yeah? So I can make the structure smaller here. Yeah? Maybe some of you already noticed, hey, what is happening here? It doesn't really matter if I move in this direction or in this direction. It will always be dark light, dark light, dark light. If we have something which can only go in one direction, it's no issue. If we have something which can go both directions, I'm not, I'm not really sure if I'm moving left or right. Yeah? So I have to use the following configuration. If this is the ruler here, And there are always these stripes. Draw it now cut open. Yeah? And here we have parallel light. Okay. Here we have the light. I'm using two detectors. One here. Huh? And one exactly positioned in a way that it will switch exactly different. Yeah? This is a detector one and detector two. And if this is now moving, yeah, I would get the following the following sequence.
Detector one. This is detector one. Is now on. After a while, it switch off and switch on again. All right. This is detector one. If we're moving in one direction. If we are moving in the same direction, this will already come on. Yeah? So here we will come on, stay on and then turn off. And you see, if we are moving in one direction, this will be on. When this comes on, this will be on. If we are moving in the other direction, yeah? so direction one, Let's say we're looking at here, we're looking at the trigger. This is now detector number two. Yeah? Look at the trigger of the detector number two. This comes on and yeah? we're moving this way. This comes on. Look here, it's on. Yeah? So I know I'm moving in this one direction. If we come from the other side and this comes on, this is off. Yeah? So I only have to look to the other side, actually. Yeah, I have to look to the to the other detector yeah, and see if it's on or off, and then I know exactly in which direction I'm moving. So I'm using two detectors with one light source, yeah, and I can determine in which direction we are moving. So now it's working left, right. There's another benefit of this. Yeah, there's another benefit of it if I do an XOR of those two signals. an XOR, exclusive OR, then we would have, we would look like that. <laughs> then we would look like that. Here we are not equal, here we are equal, here we are not equal, here we are equal, here we are not equal. You see, I've doubled the resolution. Ooh, eh? So this, this is working pretty nice. Yeah? However, now I know exactly how far I've traveled, left, right and so on. But I'm not sure where I've started. Okay, so this is a so-called incremental. Position measurement. Incremental position measurement. Here, what I write it down, incremental. We only know how far we have traveled. Only knows How far it has traveled. But not the absolute position. Needs to be initialized. Right, so it needs to be initialized at the beginning. If I turn the thing on, I have to go to a reference position, which is somehow indicated by a limit switch or something like we talked about switches, huh? which is somehow indicated by a limit switch. And yeah, then I know where I am, and from this position, I can count huh? here better resolution incremental. However, if I'm losing one increment. This is why it's called that way. If I'm losing one increment, then I'm off. And this will never be never be the be this wrong will never be, be righted. Okay? Be corrected. Corrected. This is the word I've look, I've been looking for. This 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 is simply then wrong and it will stay wrong. Yeah? I can only lose. Yeah? 
This is why sometimes there are also a combination of absolute and incremental uh, things needed. So there are markers on when we know, okay, there we know absolutely where we are. And between the markers, we are working incremental with a better resolution. Uh, so best of two worlds. So that's basically position measurement, yeah? absolute and incremental position measurement in common and optical position uh, measurement in particular, how this is working. Okay. There are different ways of how to measure position. Yeah? So this was now optical position measurement. Yeah? Next time we are going to talk about potentiometric resistance position measurement. How this is working, we will discuss in next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.